Okay, good. Your phone mm -hmm. is blowing up yeah. here shortly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, um, you girls are rolling. Okay. Give me 20 seconds to vacate. All right, okay. sounds good. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Break a leg. Thanks. <laughs> Good morning, Columbus. Welcome back to Ask Our Parent Coach. I'm Terry Manrique. This show is brought to you by workingwithparents.com, Central Ohio's leading parenting experts and coaches, where we create a safe place for parents to seek help, support on topics such as parenting, communication, relationships, and emotional intelligence. Hi, everyone. I am Alina Gray. And today we are so excited to have Chelsea Skaggs with us. She's our guest on our show. Um, Chelsea is a postpartum advocate and she's a coach who is committed to helping women kick the pressure to be Pinterest perfect. Mm -hmm. She has real raw conversations to acknowledge and empower the postpartum experience. Chelsea also focuses on small group formats to bring postpartum women together to learn about, connect, and not be alone through the whole experience of postpartum. Welcome, Chelsea. We're so happy Welcome. you're here. Yes, it's such a pleasure. <laughs> it's so fun to have fun. you here. Yes. A fun morning. Yes, you know what? If you haven't been following Chelsea on Instagram, you should. Her Instagram <laughs> is Chelsea Keeps It Real, mm -hmm. which I Kinda love. Summarizes <laughs> it all, right? I mean, you know, at some point we have to start being real. Honestly, that's what we're so yeah. about. It's right. Like, yeah. Let's let's do the job. Let's do our job that's authentic to us and stop mm -hmm. putting out stuff that's just fake news. Fake let's stop right. the fake news. And it frees <laughs> up a lot of energy yes. because yes. <laughs> curating and being fake yeah. takes a lot of yeah. mental and emotional right. yeah. energy. Right. Yeah. And, right. and, and who's benefiting from it? Right, right. Really, that's yeah. honestly the truth. Yeah. And when I, I get a lot of parents who talk, you know that I talk to, they're like, "How are you so just so relaxed when it comes to your parenting?" But because I've never, I think me, myself, my personality, I've never been about what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. I've always been about what matters to me, what matters to my family, and what's going to fulfill me and my family. That's right. it. That's all that matters. And the I other think stuff this, doesn't matter. Exactly. And I think this idea of perfection, right, that mm -hmm. we have in our society, this idea of beauty, this idea of how much you should weigh mm -hmm. right after the baby is born, right, mm -hmm. what you should be able to accomplish, what your house has to look like I mean all that is just playing into women's insecurities right. and making women feel completely inferior to a standard that's not even real right that's yes. again that's, the whole point, that's right? not even real that's yes. not even real so we have this golden standard right. that's actually just a perpetuated yes. illusion right. yes. and when yes. we stop buying into it yeah. we all benefit yes absolutely a hundred percent so tell us a little bit Chelsea how did you start on this journey like what made you be interested in this topic how did it yeah. begin yeah well so I have two children um in my first I really felt that pressure this is how I'm supposed to look this is what I'm supposed to do this is how my kids supposed to eat sleep do activities all of that and I put probably more energy yes. into holding up the illusion yep. mm -hmm. than I did actually being present in my experience. Yeah. And honestly, it took me about two years before I had that yeah. crack of, yeah. Yeah, that, that moment. moment. Like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I doing this? <laughs> Why? Where is my energy going? Yes. And again, like, who is this benefiting? Mm -hmm. um, and so when I got pregnant with my second, mm -hmm. I was like, well, if anything that I can control, it will be my mindset, my mm -hmm. energy, my understanding mm -hmm. the second time is going to be different. Right. And I really did. I geeked out on postpartum research, mm -hmm. one, becoming frustrated at how little mm -hmm. is there. given to yeah. the general public, is given to women in preparation, all of that. Mm -hmm. And then two, saying, well, how do we just make a voice mm -hmm. that's like, this is a, this is the mess, yeah. and the mess has beautiful parts, and mm -hmm. the mess has tears and hard parts. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, yeah. gosh, if we live in that, you know, being, again, that energy into being present yes. instead yeah. of the perfect illusion. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. right. I agree. And I think, you know, sometimes, too, I think there's such a, because um, postpartum is such a mm -hmm. wide you know, there's so many aspects of postpartum, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's where 
what I, why I wanted to bring you on is to talk a little bit about that because I know that you've becoming an expert on it, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I think, you know, when we say experts, I think it's people who really dive deep into one particular thing mm-hmm. in order to know everything mm-hmm. and anything about it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you're doing all the research for it, right? Mm-hmm. So that's slowly you start to realize, mm-hmm. you know what, I am learning more than the average person yeah. because of the time right. that we right. put in to educate ourselves, yeah. the commitment that we take. So there's you bring in much more value plus your own personal experience and I'm sure yes. from plus plus you know I'm sure from the women who are following you right right and that's the right. key right because for you this was real this was something mm-hmm. you struggled with this was something that you went through this is not something you just read about in books or you know blogs yeah. or theory this is like something you lived every single day yeah. so when you bring that authentic self right to to talk to people look this has been my experience this is what i struggled with this is why this is what helped me i think that makes you so much more powerful right because mm-hmm. you're really bringing the whole authentic self mm-hmm. to helping other people right yeah, yeah. and that yeah. opens what i have found is that opens doors mm-hmm. for other women to share their stories Mm -hmm. in a way that they were afraid to share them before. And that's a domino effect. Like the more women are sharing their real stories, the more we understand, the more we normalize. Mm -hmm. And we make it okay to just say, look, I'm struggling. Look, I need some help, right? Right. This is how I feel. It's okay. So what advice would you give to new moms? Like what are some things that you have shared with other moms Mm -hmm. that you work with, with, from your own personal experience? What's the feedback that you're getting as far as how do we get women to relax, take a deep breath, mm-hmm. slow down, enjoy the moments, mm-hmm. right? Right. Enjoy the moments. They stop. go by so fast. You know, they do. They go by so fast. They're so precious. And stop kind of beating yourself up mm-hmm. about things you mm-hmm. just can't control mm-hmm. all the time. Right. Right. Yes. And how do, you, how do we help women to make that mind shift because really that's what it is it's a Mm -hmm. mind shift it is how do we get women to start buying into that Mm -hmm. and not buying into Mm -hmm. what everybody else is doing and what's more comfortable for me and my baby and and my my family family. Mm -hmm. how do we start to kind of open their eyes to stop Mm -hmm. questioning themselves about everything they're doing yeah because it's painful to see Mm -hmm. that as parent coaches Mm -hmm. You hear moms who are just questioning their Everything. every move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when, like, what, when do you think we got there? Like, let's, yeah. how, where, when did we get there? Has this always been? Or do we see it more because we have the ability of social media? Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that this is twofold. Um, one, we're in a society mm-hmm. that has become much more individualistic, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. we're not growing up mm-hmm. seeing this postpartum and motherhood experience on the inside yes. mm-hmm. with family members, friends, neighbors, you know, like exactly. that village yes. that used to exist right. was about the people that mm-hmm. can support you, but it was also about you being a part of someone else's yes. behind the scenes. Yes. So now we're not behind the scenes with people. We're only seeing again mm-hmm. the social media, the highlights. What and people so, want you to see. Right. Yeah. We feel like our behind the scenes mm-hmm. should match someone else's mm-hmm. highlight moments because we don't know that everyone mm-hmm. else has a behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. We're not intricately involved with each yeah. other's lives yes. anymore. Yes. And I'm not sure how to solve yeah, it. That's, that. yeah, that's, yeah, like, right? that's an ongoing thing. I, but I, I think, think it's, it's just, just having those conversations. conversations. But it is, that's right? All I you think, can do. You know, I encourage women to think of social media as a tool, Mm -hmm. not just something we're absorbing, Mm -hmm. because you could follow Mm -hmm. hundreds of accounts. Right. You can follow hundreds of moms that are this inspiration, or you want to be like this or that, but it comes to a point where you have to decide what kind of energy that's giving you, Mm -hmm. what kind of understanding of yourself you're leaving Mm -hmm. with, and really you're the one responsible for curating what you're letting in. Right. Yeah. Right. And so it's seeking that out. Um, and unfortunately, what I have found is that a lot of women don't get postpartum education. Correct. We have prenatal appointments, mm-hmm. and we're mostly mm-hmm. focused on how the baby's developing mm-hmm. and what birth is going to be like. Yes. Exactly. Right. Two yeah. very important things. <laughs> yes, but not much support for women right. Right? going through such a no. tremendous change. You have a baby. Yeah. You have one. 
yeah. appointment afterwards. Yeah. And 90% right. of women I talk to aren't actually feeling seen and right. heard mm-hmm. right. in that time. And so I have to encourage women to dig in right. and research. Yeah. Um, and the two things I encourage them to research the most is one, like, what are the actual physical changes mm-hmm. of your body? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not the how fast can you bounce up back or what's the next mm-hmm. diet. Like, what how do is you lose the weight? actually yes. happening to your yeah. body? Yes, yeah, paying attention, right. listening. Right, and when yes. you understand that, you respect mm-hmm. your body more. Yes. And then what's actually happening in your brain mm-hmm. because we literally become rewired mm-hmm. as different people. And our brain matter changes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But people don't know that. So when they're feeling different and everything mm-hmm. feels out of place mm-hmm. they think they've done something wrong because they don't yeah. know their brain has literally changed right. yeah i yeah. think for me i just want to share those kind of personal experience because mm-hmm. i went through postpartum depression mm-hmm. too but i didn't know what it was sure so when i talked to you know my family or a couple of people i trusted they also didn't have the context because they didn't go through it. Mm-hmm. So I felt such deep shame, yeah. you know, during that time because I didn't know that it's so normal and so common mm-hmm. to feel this way. I didn't feel like I was bonding with my son, you know, the first couple of weeks. It was I was in so much pain, both physically from giving mm-hmm. birth and then emotionally because I felt like I must be the world's worst mom. Right. I'm not having all those feelings that everybody's talking about or I think I should be having. Yeah. I am just filled with sadness mm-hmm. and dread and you know, and just, just all those like negative emotions. Like the first month was so rough for me. I remember just very little of it now because it was just like my brain was in a state of fog yeah. and I just struggled through it and I didn't know that you could ask for help. I didn't know who to talk to. I don't know if this is a conversation you have with your OBGYN or like pediatrician or who Mm -hmm. do you even ask? Mm -hmm. So I kind of like struggled with this on my own until I learned much later that look, this is normal. Lots of women feel this way. They don't, and, and I think in our culture, we still have this shame. You know, we have shame as women that we feel mm. self-imposed when we feel, you know, in at odds with the idea or the image of how we think we should be, right? Mm-hmm. right? So this deep shame and the feeling of embarrassment, like, right. oh, nobody else is going through it. It's just me. Something's right. wrong with me and my mother, you know, my ability to be a mom. And I must not be, maybe that's just not for me, mm-hmm. you know? And of course, that wasn't the case at all. Right. And I got through it. But just not knowing, right? you know, that was my yeah. biggest struggle personally. So I feel so passionate about what you do mm-hmm. <laughs> and helping women and what Terry and I do is bringing awareness that this is normal. Yeah, you right. Know? And that's to be totally, yourself off about yeah. it. Right. And there are so many versions mm-hmm. of yes. normal. Yes. There's mm-hmm. not an yes. ideal. Right. You know, and it's funny that you said that. And I'm so glad you said that because, you know, you hear it again and again and again that kids, you know, there's no manual for raising a baby. Uh And thank goodness there isn't actually. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, honestly, thank goodness there isn't because no human being is going to be exactly the same. We're not Mm -hmm. designed the same. Mm -hmm. We're not programmed the same. Mm -hmm. There is not going to be a manual for how each human being is going to be developed. Right. Mm -hmm. So thank goodness for that. But we do have intuition. Mm -hmm. Right. We do have that insight and that capability to know when something's wrong Mm -hmm. or to know Mm -hmm. why, or just to have that sense of something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And sometimes we're so clouded in the space of what's going on that we don't take the second to stop and say, you know what? I'm not feeling the way I normally feel feel Mm -hmm. because I had postpartum depression Mm -hmm. with my second he was six months old when I had it yeah Mm -hmm. and but I knew slowly I was a teacher at the time and you know teaching was is my passion it's been my passion and but going to work wasn't Mm -hmm. as fulfilling Mm -hmm. coming home wasn't as joyous (laughs) just opening the door to my house (laughs) I would cry yeah Yeah. and I'm like what is mm-hmm. going on with me mm-hmm. why and i ignored it i didn't right. listen to it i didn't pay attention mm-hmm. to it and then i got deeper in it and deeper in it to the point where i didn't want to feed my baby mm-hmm. yeah. and i had my four-year-old she was turning close to five at the time and she come to me and saying mom 
baby brother's crying. Mm-hmm. Go take care of him. Go feed him. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to get up to go to work. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do anything. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of change mm-hmm. that happened in my life at that time, right? And that's where we have to kind of do, you know, do some, you know, understanding of what's going on in your environment. How many mm-hmm. transitions are you going through? Oh, right. Right. Taking that data, yes. right, to kind of understand, mm-hmm. well, what are what's causing all these changes that are happening? And I don't think we take the time to kind of mm-hmm. take that well, in. And I think we use this word like motherhood is so natural. Right. Breastfeeding is so right. natural. Right. And natural suggests that we shouldn't that struggle should be that it should be easy, easy. Right. easy. That's, but it's not it's not the case no not the case it's at not all. the case and when we you know you mentioned the shame mm-hmm. of feeling that way mm-hmm. well what does shame do it causes people to retreat yes. even more yes. Yes. tighten up your yes. whole body the way your whole body oh. just functions all together and guess what the babies feed off of that mm-hmm. right. right they mm-hmm. sense that they know something's mm-hmm. wrong so they also tend to, and then how do they act out? They act out with more crying. They act out right. with more, right? <laughs> and then the not good. Like <laughs> the, the att- normal part of attachment, right? Yeah. That process when you're not getting help and you feel all the shame by yourself and no one is supporting you, right? It interferes with that natural attachment, mm-hmm. right? That you right. have with your baby. Right. So definitely, um, I think getting help, mm-hmm. being aware, reaching out, mm-hmm. finding a community, which right. I, I know you're all about, right? right? Creating yes. that community. Yeah. That is one way to solve the problem. We're not yes. going to make it go away, mm-hmm. but we can at least help women going through it by offering them resources and right. help. So right. what do you do? So Chelsea, tell us a little bit yeah. about what you do and how you bring that to the table when you work with mm-hmm. other moms and what, what does that look like? Yeah, so I operate in two main realms, which is postpartum education mm-hmm. and postpartum support. So mm-hmm. for the women who are preparing for babies, it's making a postpartum plan together. You know, birth plans are excellent. Mm-hmm. Postpartum is weeks and months I know. and years. <laughs> even more important. And I, I even just polled uh, my audience mm-hmm. on Instagram last week, and it was like, don't know 85 to 90 percent said they felt blindsided mm-hmm. by postpartum mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so having a plan I mm-hmm. help women by saying these are some conversations to preemptively have mm-hmm. with your partner yes. here are some ways to set up your home mm-hmm. here are some boundaries to set mm-hmm. with visitors family mm-hmm. all of this to protect mm-hmm. that sacred season mm-hmm. And then in support, again, mm-hmm. I run um, small groups virtually mm-hmm. because I believe so much in yes, community yes, you know yes. we it's, it's not in person, but we do video mm-hmm. chat conferences. We see each other's faces. We're telling our mm-hmm. stories. Mm-hmm. And I provide the educational pieces. Yeah. Like, moms, this is what actually is happening in, in your, your brain. Yes. This is, Four so months. last week yeah. we did mental health. And not just a diagnosed, mm-hmm. you know, mental health. Uh, mental health <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just know. not a yes. diagnosed situation, yes. but even everyone has a mental mm-hmm. health transition. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. So we learned about that. Mm-hmm. And then I welcomed women to share their stories mm-hmm. and to almost go back and heal their judgment mm-hmm. of yes, their self. Right. Um, yes, that's so important. By seeing that they're not alone and by seeing that the changes were natural. Mm-hmm. So I do these small groups. They are um, 10 weeks long. We have a, a little bit of education or a journaling mm-hmm. prompt or something daily. And then weekly we come together to process mm-hmm. that part of mm-hmm. our experience mm-hmm. because I think when we have the chance to either heal in the moment mm-hmm. or go back, mm-hmm. revisit and heal, yes, right. we're mm-hmm. not carrying baggage. Mm-hmm. We, we're yes. more empowered as mm-hmm. moms yes. as we go on. Right, mm-hmm. right. Oh, yeah. And it's all about support. And that's mm-hmm. why we love what we do, too, because, you know, the more support you have, the more you know, the better you're going to mm-hmm. be. Right. Right. And yeah. it's just it, it's all about educating yourself and bringing and being ha- having that awareness yeah because when you're not aware you don't know what you're going to walk into you don't know what's going to be next Mm -hmm. right so if you can be proactive instead of reactive Mm -hmm. man that really Mm kind of sets you up for true success right right? and when we know that these are things that may be coming up in your life in the near weeks or two or whatever you know hey you know what six weeks is coming around Mm -hmm. you're gonna have Mm -hmm. a visit from your doctor saying what sex is okay (laughs) yes Yes. and you're like what another topic we don't have time for that one but (laughs) i'm not ready to have sex what did you just say to me right right and you feel like everything else is brushed over like okay now you know like what's that 
that mean? Right. You know, I abandoned right. my relationship because I'm not ready to have right. it. Right. What yeah. does that mean exactly? Am yeah. I a bad person because I feel like I just, you know, I'm not attaching, you know, I'm not having that physical attraction to my husband at mm-hmm. that moment? Mm-hmm. You know what? It's deeper than that. Oh, it's so, it's so deeper yeah, than that. It also impacts the fathers and husbands, yes. right? Because yes. we don't talk about that either. No, right? right? In no. our culture, like, you know, we talk very little about women's postpartum right. experience. So what about men? Even more Their so. universe has changed yes. too, right? Yes. Everything is different. Yes, they might not have the physical body changes or hormonal changes, but now there's this little creature, right, right. that's taking all of the time yes. you know, in the family. They no longer have this relationship with their wife that they mm-hmm. wanted or used to well and how does this like and, what do they do and i always kind of i i have a, a little bit of a weak spot for men too sometimes because i think where when we're starting that journey of wanting to have a mm-hmm. baby we're on a mission right so the men are like yes we're on a <laughs> mission, <laughs> right so in a sense i don't want to say they're being used sure right but in a sense that's kind of what it uh-huh. is because once babies you know once we're pregnant and once baby mm-hmm. comes there's an abandonment and I think we'll leave them behind and we do we really do and you know we have to kind of look at that Mm -hmm. side of it too but we have to educate men that you could still have that that ability to have that um, Mm -hmm. bond with your wife and it doesn't have to be with sex we have to slowly warm up to that right right? and kind of reassure our women reassure our you know our wives that you know I'm here for you and we're gonna bond differently, differently. for a little mm-hmm. while until you're healed and you're mm-hmm. ready to move on and mm-hmm. I think Chelsea you said something to me right before we, we jumped on the show you said that you have to look at it as a project right your right. baby is now a project yes. and you and your husband are involved in making it come to fruition right yes so how do you divide you know all the chores who's responsible for nighttime feeding who's responsible for diaper changes like how mm-hmm. do you communicate with each mm-hmm. other to make sure that those things are covered right. and the men feel included and i'm sure right. you talk about this too yeah, right? we do. We, i'm sure you, you know do. i see i have 10 weeks of curriculum they all have this Same. underlying yes. factor yeah. no matter what we're talking right. about um and you're right i think something that's really hard for both people in the relationship is to see we've taken on a completely different role yes, yes. so i do encourage yeah my women to start Mm -hmm. and then I do I bring the men on to a call Mm -hmm. during our 10 weeks together but I again Mm -hmm. I say you have a business relationship now too yes Mm -hmm. right and it's a partnership in order in order to have 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 communication (laughs) in order to raise this human (laughs) that you now made in order to get to the romance right right? it's almost this hierarchy you've got to get the business under Mm -hmm. control which might mean you know i recommend to people having a shared list Mm -hmm. maybe you have two red things a day that Mm -hmm. have to get done two yellow things that it'd be great Mm -hmm. if they get done yes correct you know what are the priorities Mm -hmm. can just go right Mm -hmm. and how do we communicate proactively Mm -hmm. because what i see is if we don't have a plan then you have a woman usually who's like my husband doesn't help he doesn't care for me He's yes. blah, blah, blah. I'm carrying everything. Mm-hmm. Which, and I get that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but then we're also not communicating proactively, what it is we need, right? Right. Proactively, yeah. we have to say, here's our project. Yeah. Here are the tasks that need to get mm-hmm. done. Here's how we're dividing our time, our mm-hmm. energy, our space. Mm-hmm. And then into that, you schedule like this mm-hmm. is our time yes, without right. any of those things yeah. right. as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's so important. And that's crazy critical I mean you need to have that and if you can't have that then you know the thing is about intimacy in general just having that one-on-one sitting on the couch together holding hands acknowledging each other yeah. when you come home yeah. <laughs> yes. it can lie in those really it, simple it, things. it's those small yeah. things that you need to do often which we mm-hmm. we do from our coaching programs when we do with Gottman um, uh, gotten relationship coaching doing is that doing often. those small things yeah. often that keep you connected mm-hmm. yeah right and if you slowly start to lose those small little meaningful holding hands sitting next to each other you slowly start to kind of just because connection is the most important thing mm-hmm. in a relationship mm-hmm. right and it's so easy it's so easy to lose that connection mm-hmm. to become roommates mm-hmm. and oh, yeah. to feel yeah. like you know what you're really not attractive to me anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. It's so easy for our minds <clears throat> to get there. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it takes a lot mm-hmm. of work on both parties mm-hmm. to say, 
you know what? We have to work at this. This is not something that's just going to continue. You have to right. work. <laughs> it might be natural, yeah. right? But, but it's, this it's is it's not no, easy. No, no, no. It's, yeah, not it's not easy. easy. It's never going to be easy. Yeah, but but it, I, I think that's why we do what we do, right? Yes. We're trying to help society. We're trying to help parents. We're trying to help women right. not go down the path of, you know, major, like, relationship breakdowns and divorce. And, and, right. and, and we're trying to prevent that. That's what Terry and I are so passionate about, like, doing couples coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're doing postpartum, right? Working mm-hmm. with the whole family unit to right. make sure that they stay strong, they right. stay united and connected. Yeah. And you need a, you, you need a community. You do. You do. You can't yeah. do this on your own. And yeah. it frustrates the two of us, and I'm sure you've <laughs> probably do too. <laughs> I'm sure you've seen it where people don't put the value in the right places. Yeah. They'd rather go pay, spend two thousand mm-hmm. dollars on a TV that's going to mm. bring them no value, right? They'd rather spend a thousand dollars on a new phone that maybe is going to separate them more because yeah. they're on the phone more than they are with their partner, right? Yeah, so where, where does that value? sit with you and right. what's more important where are right. you willing to invest your money yeah yeah that's the truth that's yeah. the god honest truth and where are everything. you willing to invest your money that's your money. going to enhance your overall experience as a relation as a couple or as a, or as a parent right. and i think something we say i think when we do our coaching and i say this often to my clients is you can't solve the problem with the same brain that created Ooh, it right right yeah. You need yeah. outside influence. You need additional information. Mm-hmm. You need to work with someone who can help you see another point of view, who yeah. can see a different perspective, right? Because yeah. if you're just stuck in the way you feel and the way you think, and there's no outside influence, you cannot change it because no. you created that problem in the first right. place, right? right? And it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. But then we ask all get for there. help, right? But at some point, yes. it's okay also to, to ask just for reach help. out. Right. Yeah. And right. the difference. Is yeah. that generations before exactly. and a number of cultures around the world yes. Yes. have that built into their yes. society? Right. Yes. They are getting yes. help. We're yes. not you're not mm. the only one yes. that needs help. It's just that yeah. we live in a society that become isolated. We become more mm-hmm. isolated and we yeah. actually have to do the reaching out. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whereas mm-hmm. a lot of societies and past American societies mm-hmm. had more reaching in. Correct. Than what yes. we have. Right. Right. Very true. Well, this was a great conversation. I, I mean, you know it goes really it's well when it's just like yeah. like that. So we will definitely be having oh, you yeah. back here, right? And kind of talk, dive deep into yeah. a little bit more of these subjects. So we really appreciate you being here. Thank you. It was, yeah, God, it went by you. super fast. Super <laughs> it was a great conversation. Um, thank but you, But just Chelsea. so you know, um, we are having a workshop that's coming up um, thir- this Thursday, March 5th. Uh, at, it's a parent university in, the du- in Dublin City Schools. Uh, and you can go ahead and register on our Working With Parents Facebook page. Uh, it's called Why the Quality of Your Relationship Has a Direct Impact on Your Child's Emotional Intelligence. Mm-hmm. So that is our show for today. Thank you so much for being here again and listening and tuning in. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at our parent and, and Chelsea, how can and they reach yes, you? Yeah. Yes, um, my website is postpartum together. Yep. Dot com, yeah. Um, and you can find Instagram and other links yes, straight and from there. Follow on Instagram, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And you know, apply your day with compassion, patience, and respect to those that you are in contact with. Thank you so much. Thank you.